could you believe it? Like, genuinely, could you believe that Sonic Frontiers is now a year old? Because I can't, and I'm the one making this video. I'm the one that's starting this intro right here and letting you know, letting the people know that this game is a freaking year old. That didn't make any sense. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Sonic Frontiers is officially a year old. That is insane. It is crazy to think about how time really passes by when you're having fun. And in the case of Sonic here, it, it's just insane to think about. We had like a really solid 3D Sonic game when it uh, released and launched. And then we have all the updates and content and extra stuff that we got on top of that during the course of, you know, this year alone. And so it's, it's pretty insane to just have that idea of like, wow, Sonic Frontiers really released a year ago and we had this entire year of content to demonstrate just how old that game is. But aside from all that, it's incredible. You know, it's, it's honestly incredible to think about just how far Sonic has gone since Frontiers and just with Frontiers alone. So to kind of organize my general thoughts and everything about this one year old game and to celebrate its lifespan of one year, um, first of all, the base game itself when it initially released was something that was super refreshing for Sonic. Like, there's no denying that factor of what makes this game good as a Sonic game and just good as sort of like a 3D platformer in general because when you have to consider the fact that before Frontiers we had Forces and then before Forces we had Lost World and before Lost World we had sort of like those goodies here and there with Generations, Colors and Unleashed, the big three back in the day more or less, you know. But besides all that, Sonic never really had that consistency more or less in regards to like who he was as a character, who he was in terms of the style of game that he was, the type of 3D game that he was meant to have since Adventure 2, since Hero, since Shadow of the Hedgehog, since Sonic 06. You know, we never had that. And it wasn't until Frontiers demonstrated that, oh, we can bring back those elements of modern Sonic that everybody grew up with in the late 90s to early 2000s. You know, we can bring back that characterization of Sonic and, you know, try to create this story of Sonic that we've wanted since that era again. And I absolutely love Frontiers for that. All the callbacks, all the references to the previous games were amazing. They were incredible. I do wish they weren't just references. I wish that there was like a large world building within it in terms of like how the game delivered on those callbacks so that there was like a consistent continuity rather than just saying that oh this happened and that happened all that kind of stuff but again Frontiers is nice it's sort of like the connecting point of all of the 3D Sonic games and all the Sonic games and at least ensuring that everything is canon within that time frame and we can kind of move forward with that in the, like the sequel of Sonic Frontiers 2 or perhaps a Sonic Adventure 3 if we finally get the chance for a Sonic Adventure 3 but besides all that base game was super fun uh, the cyberspace levels were fantastic, a little janky and all that kind of stuff. Like, we can admit that, but it was fun to, like, have that speedrun challenge with them and all the extra goodies you have on top of, like, the fishing minigame with Big the Cat. Of course, you can't have that. And, you know, soundtrack-wise, you know, I think about it, super, super incredible. Kellen Quinn really demonstrated what a supersonic boss fight is meant to be. It reminded us of like the live and learn days. It reminds us of the open your heart days, the what I made up, anything Crush 40 related in terms of like the early 2000s Sonic boss fights. That's what, that was what was consistent with Frontiers in every single boss. And even the Final Horizon update demonstrated that and fixed a lot of those issues for the final boss. But besides all of that, incredible base game, super fun, Replay value is there if you want to do like a 100% completion, but quite honestly, it's not worth it in my opinion. Like it's fun to mess around and go through the cyberspace levels and the updates did kind of fix that sort of speak in terms of like a replay value, but in terms of the base game, it felt like a one and done experience, but a good one and done experience that really showcases what Sonic is meant to be and what Sonic will be moving forward and hopes that at least Sonic Team and Sega can truly collaborate and get a bigger budget in the process. <laughs> Thank you.
On top of all that, we also can't forget about like how the story of Frontiers really demonstrated that serious nature of Sonic again. Like not so much characterizations because there's one thing about the difference between a storyline and a characterization in regards to like creating the plot of a game and the synopsis and all that kind of stuff. And in terms of characterization, like I said, it was nice to see Sonic going back to its adventure roots. The same with all the characters, you know, with Knuckles, Tails, Amy, Eggman even, hell, Big the Cat to some capacity, going back to the fishing minigame for a second. Yeah, technically speaking, he also had his adventure characterization of just showing up and being this omnipotent force because he, he just shows up whenever he feels like it. Like, that's just Big the Cat right there. But Eggman was good. I love Sage throughout the entirety of base game and, of course, update-wise and things like that. And just, again, seeing that characterization of the adventure era shine again almost... 20 something years later was truly fantastic to see with Frontiers including the updates with Final Horizon and all that kind of stuff but in terms of the story of Frontiers man it was awesome Sonic Frontiers story was just again it was also that that revival of the adventure era in terms of trying to build a serious plot but also staying consistent with the whimsical world of what Sonic is if you look back at the classic games for example or if you look at even how they portrayed Sonic heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog to some capacity you see that Frontiers managed to somehow blend the two although we can argue environmental design wasn't really as great as it could have been you know, platforming wise, if again, all jank and all that kind of stuff, we'll talk more about the controls on top of Final Horizon because, yeah. But aside from all that, Frontiers' story was great. Easily one of the better Sonic stories we've had in a long ass time. Like, that's that's a fact right there. You, you can't say Sonic Forces had a good story and the same with Lost World. The same, hell, the same with Generations. I gotta be honest. Since 2010, Sonic never had a good storyline. And I'm glad to see that finally after all that, you know, I wouldn't say backlash, but just removing the people who are in charge of those game storylines and their plots and all that. It's nice to see that Ian Flynn is in charge now in terms of future Sonic games. And, you know, with Frontiers, he demonstrated that he knows his lore, he knows his characters, he knows the Sonic universe. But I do wish he can kind of like not have too much of a stronghold moving forward because... Over the past year with Frontiers, he really tried his best to lay out a One Piece style world building. Like, bro thought he was Oda, but in reality, like, you can't be the GOAT himself, you know? Just, just gotta be real here, so hopefully for the next game with Frontiers 2 or whatever it is, just t dial it back a little bit, Ian Flynn, just dial it back. Like... Yeah, okay, we have the end and all that kind of thing. Just dial it back, my guy, please. Now, onto like the basic stuff with Frontiers, you know, controls, gameplay, content of all that, you know, notwithstanding the updates, since updates clearly added a lot more content into the mix, which we'll cover those later on in the video. Probably do like a timestamp for this. I don't know, we'll see in post. But regarding the base game's content and gameplay, it was something that was ambitious for Sega and for Sonic Team specifically since they are the guys involved with Sonic, it's in the name, and seeing them trying to incorporate ideas and elements from various games out there from, you know, clearly for example, Monster Hunter, whether it's World or, you know, Rise, or obviously Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and just all of those open world concept games that are out there nowadays. I like that that's where they were leaning with with Frontiers and I really really enjoyed that free roam aspect that Sonic never really had in his games because you have to remember that Sonic is a platformer at the end of the day and it's not so much something that I could argue like a Banjo-Kazooie or a Mario 64 or Sunshine or Galaxy where it's like a collect-a-thon and a proper 3D platformer where you can roam around in different locales and you basically have this again free roaming idea and concept and you can basically do whatever you want for example with Mario 64 and all the other 3D Marios you can technically go around and do one mission and then accidentally stumble upon the other mission and end up doing mission three. So for example, if you were in Mario, in, in for example, Mario Sunshine, you can technically do mission three in Rico Harbor accidentally 
without so much trying to do the first mission. So that's what I mean by like that free roam idea of just like letting loose and accidentally stumble upon, you know, the secrets of those locales. Frontiers did a really good job in that department. Though I will say one of its down points was definitely environmental design. I, I understand that a lot of people have this con like this conceptualization of Sonic in regards to saying that, oh, Sonic is either whimsical and comical and, you know, very cartoonish as we've seen with the classic games, for example, you know, Superstars is a perfectly recent example of all that and how that's supposed to be Sonic moving forward. And we did see that with like the 2010, you know, Colors, Generations, uh, Lost World and Forces, I guess, even though it was trying to be too serious, but that, that's for another uh, argument aside from all that. But some people claim that Sonic has always been on that side, while others, like myself, prefer to have like that balance of that realism and that whimsical nature and combine the two to really have like this good art style and art direction for Sonic that allows him to be who he's meant to be and also keep to the consistencies of, you know, the adventure era and his level of realism and also his whimsical nature. And of course the 2010s and its comedic cartoonish like vibes for modern Sonic. I think Frontiers could have really benefited from all of that. But I think we'll probably talk about that in a future video because Sonic Dream Team is a thing now. And you know, from a month from now, people are gonna be playing it on Apple Arcade and we could talk more about like that art style and how that could be incorporated and all that kind of stuff. But bottom line with what Frontiers provided back then and still now a year later, it's perfectly fine. It is good. It is a solid seven out of 10, which is perfect for Sonic. And obviously we can ask for a little bit more on that in the future, but environmental design was great. Controls were something that I wish they really took a lot more time refining and a lot more time sort of polishing because I have to be completely real with you Sonic felt super jank I don't I don't necessarily understand people when they say that oh Sonic controls super well in Sonic Frontiers I can agree with that and I can understand that if your max speed just roaming around doing whatever it is you want to do in each of the islands but in regards to the actual proper platforming and the Final Horizon clearly demonstrated the, the level of jank the Sonic and the gang are in terms of platforming. But if you want to really do the platforming challenges and all that kind of stuff, it's annoying to do. And I think Sonic Team didn't really flesh the actual elements of what a Sonic game is supposed to be in a Sonic game when Frontier's here, but I digress. It was still fun. Those janky moments, those controls still allowed for something fun and unique for Sonic at the end of the day. And again, it showed that level of ambition, especially with the fact that they tried to Devil May Cry and hack and slash Sonic. And dude, that, that's just awesome. Like, I'm so glad they took some level of dedication for a skill tree and a moveset for Sonic in this game. And I definitely want to see that more down the line. Also, we can't forget about the cyberspace levels for a second. Before I talk about boss fights and all that kind of stuff, the cyberspace levels were easily a 10 out of 10 in terms of like the overall content of Sonic because while we had that 3D collectathon style in the overworld and the open zone sections of like all these Starfall Islands, the cyberspace levels were what makes Sonic really, you know, a 3D platformer in the first place. That high speed kinetic energy action, all that kind of stuff. I really loved how they wanted to implement something that was refreshing, unique, and also reminiscent of the old 3D Sonic games and allow that to stir in a modern context. Like, I understand there was a whole thing about reusing assets and level designs from Unleashed, Generations, Colors, all that kind of stuff. I totally understand that and I was one of those people where I was like, it doesn't really matter if it's fun, it's fun. That's all, that's really what is bottom line at the end of the day, especially when you consider the fact that there's been so many games out there that have reused assets time and time again. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, perfectly good examples of that, what I mean of like reusing assets in the bunch. It's just about how you reuse it and how you manage to make it fun and unique and cyberspace levels really demonstrated that. And I love how they wanted to implement something that was very sonic in regards to that. But one of the key issues in terms of that was the idea of like only having Sky Sanctuary, Chemical Plant, a version of City Escape, I guess, or Radical Highway, I, I don't I don't know, honestly, and obviously Green Hill Zone. Like those were the only four 
theme aesthetics that they have for the cyberspace levels. And I really wish they tried their best giving more of those, you know, like more of a seaside hill, more of like, you know, I guess Marble Garden, you know, try to like use, I would argue that the cyberspace levels would have been a good moment for all the lesser known stages to be thrown into the mix and be, you know, amplified and refined for a modern Sonic game. And I felt like that was like a missed opportunity in that regard, but that's mostly just environmental design. Again, like I said in the previous segment, Frontiers could have done a whole lot better in that regard. But cyberspace levels, super fun to go through. I love the challenges with the updates that they provided for it now. I love everything about the fact that all the jank of what I mentioned in regards to the controls and feel to Sonic, you can use that to your advantage and make the cyberspace levels so much fun that they already are. So that's already a plus on my book with the cyberspace levels. And I hope they can do something more of that and obviously refine the controls, refine the level design, make original level design for Sonic in a future Frontiers or something similar to what Frontiers provided. That would be something that I would really wish regards to all that. But again, in terms of base game and also Final Horizon and all the other stuff in terms of the update content, what it is is perfectly fine and something that does offer a little bit of that replay value if you ever want to you know just chill and do all that kind of stuff but of course i can't forget the boss fights and the music now i think i kind of teased that a little bit when i in the beginning of the video with kellen quinn and all that but obviously just the entire soundtrack of frontiers really again hits home with the idea of this is a revival of Sonic. And it's not just so much a revival of Sonic, it's a new step forward for Sonic. This is how we want to present Sonic moving forward. This is how we want to present modern Sonic to be specific. And Frontiers really demonstrated that with the musical atmosphere, the boss fights, especially the boss fights, you guys. Like, again, I don't care what people have to say about, oh, you can just button mash it and do the stomp attack. And I mean, you, you can completely do that with Final Horizon, but just the boss fights and the idea that you were able to play as Super Sonic consistently throughout the game was amazing. It really highlights what makes Super Sonic so cool of a concept in the Sonic universe. It brought back that coolness factor of Super Sonic and it was just nice to just be able to play as Super Sonic without having the need to do a secret like ending unlockable in a classic game or in an advanced game. I think in Sonic Rush as well, or just having to wait until the end of the game to be able to do all of that with, you know, like all the 3D Sonic games since Adventure. So it was nice to see that consistency with Super Sonic and also to showcase the limitations of Super Sonic as well, which was something we've never seen in any of the 3D Sonic game as well. And Frontiers showcased that Super Sonic has its limitations. It is not the by all end all means to obliterate a god like Dark Gaia, which by the way, fun fact in canon, Dark Gaia was the only one that actually caused harm to Super Sonic. So that says a lot in terms of like the limitations of Super Sonic, but the Titans must have been stronger than Dark Gaia because back to back to back, Sonic had to really showcase his talents as Super Sonic. And we see that in gameplay and combat and the moves that you were able to do in throughout gameplay wise and, and all the content of the game. But the boss fights, dude, easily the best thing of Frontiers by a mile. And with Kellen Queen being like the lyric vocalist for all that, top notch, truly incredible, dude. Like favorite boss fight will always be the Wyvern fight in the second island and Ares Island because it was super Dragon Ball-esque and just seeing Sonic just do a, just twirling around a giant robot snake into a mountain easily just encapsulates what Super Sonic is all about. But obviously Final Boss, especially the Final Horizon version of the Final Boss, truly, truly outstanding. Like this is what I want every boss fight to be for a Sonic game moving forward. And I genuinely hope Sonic Team demonstrates that and showcases that in their next game because there's no way you can start with that and then go back down. Like I do not want an unleash and then a colors in terms of like release whatever it is, you know, like you get what I'm saying. Man, this is what happens when you don't unscript your videos and you're talking out of your ass and you're just letting these thoughts just randomly pop up and you sound like you know what you're talking about. 
but you really don't. I apologize for all that, but hey, let's talk about the updates for a second here because that is one of the final things I do want to talk about before encapsulating everything that I know of Frontiers and then truly giving my final verdict, so to speak. So now the updates were something that was very fun because to me, there were DLCs. The DLCs is downloadable content. Uh, that is what those updates were. They're downloadable content you could get after the game. And it was nice to see how each update was trying not so much to fix, although it was to a capacity, but I'm not willing to argue about that just yet. They were willing to add on to what worked and be a little bit more ambitious with their ideas regarding what could have been Frontiers had it been released at that moment in time. And I know that may seem like Sonic Frontiers sounds to be like a unfinished product, but in reality, it was a finished product. It was a satisfying finished product. And all the updates were just a means to add on to more of a replay value to Frontiers and really elevate its status as a good Sonic game. And we can argue a little more about that with the Final Horizon. If not, I did an entire review on the Final Horizon that I recommend you check out after this video. It'll probably pop up right there in the little like whatever it is that it's called at this point on YouTube. Like I don't even know what's going on. But bottom line, content wise and the updates were fun. Again. Uh, the first update was really nice in adding that replay value and a challenge to Sonic Frontiers in terms of like here are cyberspace challenges, try to get it all in S rank and in the like this lowest time possible. Boss fights, a boss rush was awesome. Like this is what I love to see just going in and out in terms of all these enemies you have to face, all these mini bosses and then going to face like that tiny of that area. Super, super fun, super, super incredible. Jukebox and allowing like all the music of every Sonic game out there be a part of Frontiers. Amazing, dude. It reminded me, funny enough, of Final Fantasy 15 and their music player, where you were able to play previous Final Fantasy songs and also near apparently. So the jukebox and Frontiers really reminded me of that and it was super really fun to like just breeze through all the islands with Sonic Adventure music, with classic Sonic music and just all that kind of fun stuff. And the second update, which was Sonic's birthday update, it was nice to have the spin dash be involved because when you're playing the Final Horizon and you wanna like S rank the cyberspace levels and speed run through those, the spin dash is perfect for all that, my guy. Like that is phenomenal work. That is the best rep representation of a spin dash. And like it, it adds on to the speed and momentum of Sonic. And that is again, something that I really love and appreciate from Frontiers. And so yeah, update two really allowed a lot more of a fluidity with Sonic. It really allowed a lot more movement of Sonic and just a celebration of Sonic because it was Sonic's birthday update. That's literally what it's called. And I think there was like a lot more Coco challenges. I think there's a lot more platforming sections. I don't really remember because I played for it a little while, but I was mostly intrigued and invested on the Final Horizon, which again, I have a review for that one. But in terms of my general thoughts on it in this video, the Final Horizon update was something that I did have a lot more qualms with because I genuinely believe that I wish that was in the original game. Like forget the boss rush, the challenges and all that kind of stuff. I wish Final Horizon was in the base game, or at the very least, the final boss was in the base game. I didn't mind anything else that they added on to. The tower challenges were fun, they were decent. I wasn't a big fan of that boss rush challenge at the end. I'll still make the claim that it would have been well paced had the boss rush been you know, dissected into all the other tower challenges. So for example, you were in tower one, you climbed up to that one, you did like the, the boss challenge, whatever, you know, for, for uh, Giganto and then Wyvern's the second tower and then Knight's the third tower and then you had like a version of Supreme in the fourth tower and then the fifth tower, you would argue kind of would be all four, five, all four, three of them and something to that capacity. But you know, I did all my thoughts on that in that video that I already did for that. But besides all that, the updates, were a good way to expand onto Frontiers without so much compromising so much of the original game. And that is something that I hope they take that into major consideration for future DLC projects, for future update content in a future Sonic game. And so, yeah, definitely something I really enjoyed. 
little bit of a Final Horizons, but again, I did a whole other video with that uh, that you can watch later. So now with all my ramblings out of the way, with everything that I've said in the most basic and general terms out there, like I'm, I'm sorry I didn't go into much specifics, but when you're doing unscripted content, at least in my case, I, I don't understand why my brain doesn't want me to talk specifics, to bring out specifics, unless I have to write it down. Like that's just a reality. But in regards to just ending this video off, so to speak, and just ending off my final thoughts of Frontiers a whole ass year later, it's truly one of the best Sonic games there is. To me, Sonic Frontiers is top five. And I did a YouTube short of my top five 3D Sonic games and it is on my top five. And the reason it's been on my top five is not just because of everything that I've said in this video, but it's also because it reminded me to be a Sonic fan again, but not like a Sonic fan that you would be on Twitter or Twitter X or X, I don't know what we call it at this point, but just being on social media and just talking trash about the past of Sonic and then being super optimistic about the future of Sonic, big ass air quotations there. You know, that's that's not the Sonic fan I wanted to be. And yeah, I kind of was that for a time and all that kind of stuff because if we're being completely honest, Sonic is like Pokemon in the sense that you can enjoy the games, you can criticize the games, but God forbid you try to peg one down over the other, you're going to get screwed over by the masses. Like the Twitter community is going to haunt your ass. They're going to they're they're going to do obscene things to you in terms of whatever take you make in terms of the Sonic games that you've played. And Frontiers for me reminded me that screw all that, like just enjoy the game. Yeah, six is it 60 bucks worth? Honestly, yes, way more than superstars, but Frontiers again just reminded me to have fun as a Sonic fan. It reminded me that regardless of what people have to say about the rough transition into 3D or that 2D was better than 3D Sonic and anything else that you can argue would be applicable in the Pokemon world, I don't care about that, you know? And it's fun because Sonic Frontiers just reminded me why I loved Sonic as a kid. He's snarky, he's serious, he cares for his friends, he's out on adventures doing the wildest shit imaginable, he beats up gods because he feels like it, you know, the Chaos Emeralds, those fruit gushers, he can just inject that in his veins and go Super Saiyan, like, all of that Frontiers demonstrated and reminded me that I love Sonic because of all of this. Not because of the revival of the adventure era or the reminiscences of blah blah blah, insert a gaming journalist quote there. No, it's because I grew up watching that Sonic. I grew up watching Sonic X. I grew up, I grew up playing Adventure 1, Adventure 2, Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog. Like, those were what Sonic was to me. And Frontiers brought that back. Like, Frontiers really brought that back. And I hope that in the future, again, regardless if it's a Frontiers 2, an Adventure 3, or even in Dream Team on Apple Arcade, I hope they stay consistent with that Sonic because that is the Sonic that made me love, fell in love with the franchise, and it's the Sonic that made me appreciate Frontiers a hell lot more than any other game out there. And, you know, I want to see that. A lot of people want to see that, and that's why I mostly wanted to make this video a year later, not so much as a review, although I would like to make a review on this in the near future, probably as we tackle all the three Sonic games, you know, at some point, but you know, I still got Ace Attorney to do as a 5k special, I have, a, I have to do all these discussion videos just to be relevant on YouTube, but again, in terms of Frontiers, it was one hell of a ride, really, really enjoyed it, super, super amazing as a Sonic fan. Truly one of the best games in, in the Sonic franchise as a platformer fan easily something that could have been fixed down the line But was still satisfying to play and now has that replay value that I can go back to if I ever feel like it and all that and just as a gamer in general It was peak fiction truly one of the best that w was offering in 2022 last year and truly something that spoke to the hearts of all of its fans 
and something that again I wish would be would stay consistent in future titles but we'll have to wait and see for sure on the actual future of Sonic post Dream Team like that's for sure and now with that sentimental conclusion I want to see your thoughts in the comments like what were your feelings when it originally released a year ago your feelings of all the content it has now with all the updates with everything that people have spoken about this 3d sonic game lay it out in the comments i really want to read your thoughts your opinions your your sentiments towards this game and how it can improve the sonic franchise moving forward how it can elevate the 3d platforming genre in terms of sonic to greater heights to new horizons if you will it was right there the joke was right there okay let me have it but just throw all that in the comments because i like i said I love Frontiers. This was easily one of the best Sonic games I've ever experienced in a long ass time. And like, I feel like a lot of you guys feel that same way too. And hopefully we get to see more of that in the future, but we'll have to wait and see after Dream Team. I feel like Dream Team is something that we're gonna see as like a standard, more or less in regards to what Sonic could be. But again, we'll have to wait and see until December 5th. I'll probably make another video on that too. But again, throw your comments, engage with me. Let's have that conversation, fellas, because trust me, there is so much to talk about with Frontiers and I am just happy to have this conversation with all of you. And you know, why not? You know, just why not do it? Just, just do it. Let's have it, let's do it. Yes, this is exactly how I'm ending the video, by the way. This is the outro, peace out. I, I don't know how to end this one. Love you all.